Blog Talk Radio. Welcome back to Life Lessons Radio. I'm your host, Rick Tokini. Thanks for joining us on America's favorite talk show that's focused on teachable moments. And I know all of you in the listening audience love the fact that we bring on celebrities, um, directors, producers, writers that always talk about the creative process. And uh, they always provide a, a great encouragement to you um, as we, as a network, are on the stay curious mode for this year. And uh, we appreciate all of you joining us. We've got some great shows coming up in the near future. And uh, so just stay tuned to Block Talk Radio and the Life Lessons Network to uh, listen to those. Uh, today's guest is artist and um, music rapper and now the national spokesperson for Rachel's Challenge, poet, and uh, his uh, great um, representative is on as well, Michelle Zeitlin. Welcome to both of you to Life Lessons. Thank you, Rick. Well, I just wanted to make a quick correction. I'm actually one of 50 presenters. I'm not the national spokesperson for Rachel's Challenge. Well, that's I appreciate that, and I and we appreciate the fact that you're involved with that. We are, uh, well, we actually are based here out of Denver and uh, had personally experienced the whole Columbine uh, situation and still do because it, it absolutely rocked our uh, community. So we're, we are glad that you're associated with that. And would you be so kind to tell our listening audience about more about yourself, where you're from originally, and uh, your career journey? Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I'm in Long Beach, California. That's home for me right now. And, um, you know, Rachel's challenge for, for those people that don't know is based around the story and the legacy of Rachel Joy Scott, who was the first person uh, killed in the Columbine shooting. And after her death, her family found an essay that she had written called My Ethics, My Codes of Life. And a large portion of our program is based on her life and her writings. And it really revolves around this central notion uh, of kindness and of compassion. Mm. I love that. That says a lot about um, you know about you as well as we as we honor Rachel's life. And and how did, exactly did you get involved with uh, the Rachel's Challenge organization? It's kind of one of those interesting life stories that just takes uh, takes your life for a turn that you didn't expect. I actually met a good friend of Rachel's father, um, Daryl, and he's a he's an educator. His name is Gene Bedley. And uh, he was our neighbor, believe it or not. He was our neighbor, and uh, my family business growing up was heavily involved in music and in entertainment. And one of the things we did was a a limousine service, a car service. So I would take uh, Mr. Bedley back and forth to the airport uh, while he was traveling, and that's when we began exchanging stories, life stories, just like your show. And it really, you know, uh, brought us together. And he told me about. Uh, this amazing young girl, Rachel, and the things she did and the things she stood for, and the connection was made in that moment all the way in California. Mm, beautifully stated. It's it's uh, wonderful how we are all interconnected like that. And when you look at the, the body of your work uh, from being a rapper uh, to an artist and your involvement with Rachel's Challenge, and now – uh, creating this track called The Voice of Change. At, at what point, Poet, did you turn from a focus on just success to being something significant, doing something to change the world? You know, I feel like uh, well, that's a great, great question. I feel like that's always been a, a part of my matrix woven in there, uh, whether it's the way I was raised or, or my family. I, I believe the integrity of of garnering that success always played a part in how this thing would come about. But I but I also believe that, um, you know, with Rachel's Challenge and my Rachel's Challenge family over there in Colorado, I consider them very much uh, a family. It, it has brought this idea that's been kind of uh, 
you know, dormant inside of me a lot more to the forefront of what I do and why I do, if that makes sense. Mm. Kind of like your own uh, ethics or your own code of life is, has been rewritten and continues to, I guess, be refined the older that you get. And um, Rachel's, uh, in Rachel's memory, perhaps that's going to be her legacy about how uh, the next generation millennials perhaps write their own code of life. Can you comment on that? Absolutely. Well said. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just I, I think that for for millennials, there's this opportunity to to go out and and um, change the world. And I don't and I don't think that it's just words. I think it's it's for real. Um, in the pre-show, uh, we convinced a poet to. Uh, give us a little version of the upcoming song, Voice of Change. So here it goes, acapella. Uh, pull it, take it away, and give us a little a little piece of the Voice of Change. Sure. I remember growing up watching the TV, looking at the stars, praying to the stars, one day it could be me. But they just laughed at me. Yeah, sure thing, fatty. Made me work harder. Ask my father, what do you think, daddy? He smiled with a twinkle in his eye, and then he said, your success alone will make them regret what they said. Mind blown, focus, I'm home, knowing I'm prone to blow up, so I'm gone. And never look back at the pack who attacked my dreams, they couldn't see him. I wish I could tell him I listened, I miss him, and he was here to see it. Now I'm grown up watching the TV, and a different side of me sees things I can't believe we freely allow to happen half the time, during it and after. Then we ask ourselves what we could have done in the disaster. Looking at the harsh truth is like looking through a rear view. I don't want to look back and let it just continue. Call them by the Sandy Hook, Boston to Oklahoma, Africa to every border. There's places with no water, faces of scared daughters with no fathers, and more problems. Got us asking, why bother? You see, it ain't about unity. It's simply about you and me. And the choices that we make will affect our whole community. Mm -hmm. That is beautiful and powerful. Maybe that will become the anthem of our future. Um, in, inside that, uh, there were, I, I, my, I guess I was stopped by when you said, I miss him. Is there a special message inside that? Um, in, inside the voice of change about uh, paying attention to the time that we have here on earth and, and being closer to our parents? Is that an extra special bonus message inside there? Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly it is, you know. Um, and even even tying back to, you know, loss being a part of all of our lives and just this, this you know, we have no clue how how long someone's going to be here. You know, it's a special message for, for anyone listening like yourself who maybe that resonates with, a special message for myself and the people in my life who who have really, um, you know, shaped who I've become. And just, just realizing that sometimes we're in such a rush to go and do things that, that we deem and we think are important when the most important thing that we can do is, is just spend time with someone that means uh, means the world to us. Mm. Thank you for saying that. We always honor on the show moms and dads, and um, you know I'd like to honor uh, today <clears throat> uh, from the Columbine perspective the principal that's just announced locally that he was going to be retiring after 30 plus years there, and he's been um, a, a community leader of sorts, kind of leading leading us through the mourning process and the grieving, and was uh, you know showed his courage and all that. But no one more courageous than I think Rachel. And that, and what she left behind, and now the voice of change anthem for um, America and the next generation is just extraordinary. You mentioned the word water inside that inside that song, and uh, for for our listeners that pay attention to especially our travel show and listen to the international people that we have on poet, we often talk about the singular biggest problem in the world, and it's about clean water. What inspired you to make that important statement and word inside the voice of change? Well, I think it's one of um, one of the many commonplace things 
that that we you know here in many times in America you know just just take for granted just this notion of the most fundamental sustenance you know that that we have water there there's places that do not have that and if you get the the physical representation is water and in our lives what what is the equivalent of water the biggest source of of our survival is love and there's places lacking both there's places that you know have plenty of water and not enough love and there's other places with plenty of love and no water you know so mm. i felt it was a um, you know a mention for that reason yeah we really appreciate that what what a great parallel and in a a strong statement to make. Okay, let's make sure that uh, our listening audience gets connected to you. Tell us all the various ways by social media that we can find out more about you. Um, in terms of my personal information, you can find me at any social media hub, um, Facebook, Twitter, uh, SoundCloud, YouTube, all of that. All you do is type in that website, slash Poet Ali Official. And uh, any of the major social media hubs, you can find me, you know, by just typing in that website, you know, tw- Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, SoundCloud, Reverb, any of them, and just dot com slash Poet Ali Official. So the Facebook would be Facebook.com slash Poet Ali Official. That is great. And as we conclude this show, uh, Poet, I would love for you to make a, a final commentary and provide a bit of advice to our millennial listeners out there. They have been through the events that you mentioned and sang in The Voice of Change, um, including 9-11 and uh, the, the many tragedies and shootings and what's taking place even today. What, what can you say that would kind of lift their spirits and and make sure that they um, can stand above it and go out there and and uh, literally be the change that they wish to see in the world. Yeah. Um, well, I just want to start by saying I'm not sure how much I'm in a position to to give anyone guidance or advice. I want to make that clear because we're all going through this together. But the only thing that I can say has uh, has helped me and and has worked for me is by rather than asking the question, you know, um, you know, what can't I do or there's nothing I can do to change this or fix this, is to start on the tiny things that we possibly can do in, in our in our immediate lives to 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 garner that that strength, that love, and that hope. What what where where can we start? Is it being nicer to the people around us? Is it, you know, appreciating our families? Is it um, using whatever gift or tool that that we have to actually, you know, uh, do something, you know, that that, that will make a difference? So I think it it starts with the questioning. And the questioning is, what would I like to do? What can I do? And um, what matters to me? And in that way, I think uh, we ultimately will, will find places where we can make things better. There you go. It's really a call to action and uh, to d- really to be out there and to do something to make this world better. Uh, we appreciated both of you being on today's show. We welcome you back anytime. Keep us posted on uh, the progress of, of your life. And, uh, Poet, we wanted to just uh, say a little thanks from our team here at Life Lessons for what we consider to be your career that's moved from success to trying to do something of significance. Thank you guys so much, and thank you, Michelle, and Morzat Management for uh, for having me. Really appreciate it. You are most welcome. And, folks, we leave you with, um, with one of our favorite uh, quotes from a book called Atlas Shrugged that I think has some relevance to today's show, and it said, What greater wealth is there than to own your own life and to spend it on growing? Every living thing must grow. It can't stand still. It must grow or perish. So uh, take up the challenge of poet. Go out there and make a difference. Don't stand still. This is Rick Tokini. Thanks for joining us on today's Life Lessons. And join us again for another great show. So dark on your own.
Muhammad Ali official band.